Yes or no? Yes. Jonesy, Camilla, Buttercup, Snickerdoodles. Nice job. <laughs> All right. Like denominator. What's another name, everybody? Remember, this is your video, not mine. What's another name for a like denominator? Common denominator. Good. I like more enthusiasm, though. It's a common denominator, right? Yes. That's the enthusiasm level we're at. All right. So like denominator is a common denominator. Same thing. Don't get them mixed up. That was also our cheat sheet. All right, to find a common denominator between two or more fractions, you need to find a common multiple. Would it be fair to say that a common denominator is also a common multiple? Yes. yes. A common denominator is a common multiple. So bear with me for a moment. I'm actually going to skip down to number six because it's a little, actually I'm going to skip down to number seven. Five, six, and seven are all similar. It's just a little easier to see. I'm going to use my green pen, and I want you guys to realize that our problem was in black. Everybody see the black writing on the board? Yeah. So we had two six, we had a box, and we had a three H, right? And our yes. job was to figure out which one was bigger. And can you compare fractions that have unlike denominators? No, no it's against all rules and regulations, right? So in order to compare fractions with unlike denominators, you need to get them to have like denominators by making equivalent fractions. So you all decided that six and eight have a common multiple. Some of you said, Mr. Pottinger, use 48, which we did. Others of you said use 24, which happens to be the LCM. Does it matter which one we use? No. no. 24 might be a little easier because it's smaller numbers. But we said, okay, let's do 48. Because 6 times 8 is 48. It's definitely going to be a common multiple. We wrote 48 down first. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay, we wrote 48 for both of our fractions. We drew our lines. And then what? after we, after we found a common denominator, we make what? Bubbles. Everyone says bubbles, right? So we made our bubbles. And then what we needed to do is we needed to figure out how did we get from this number 6 to 48? And you guys all said you multiply by? 8. So we're going to put an 8 in the bubble. And if you do that to the bottom, you also do that to the top. Again, and you're gone. Understand? What's 2 times 8? 16. So we have 16 over 48. Okay, now, how do we get from 8 to 48 on this side? Everybody? We multiply by 6. And if we multiply the bottom by 6, we multiply the top by? 6. And 3 times 6 is? 18. We have just done the hard part, right? Now we have 16 over 48, 18 over 48 is equivalent fractions. What is bigger than 2 sixths? Or 3 eighths? Was 18 bigger than 16? Yes. So 3 eighths is bigger. Does everybody understand the process? Yes. Very specific we are with our processes. Number three, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. We just needed to put those fractions in order from biggest to smallest. It was a little more complicated than the fact that we had one, two, three, four denominators that were different, right? Yes. But we were smart and we figured out that 36 was a common multiple for all four of them. And we just did the same thing I talked about. You made bubbles, and you found what numbers helped come up with equivalent fractions. Questions?